Hello again and welcome to my channel and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about how to calculate GC content for a problematic DNA sequence. There are several methods that you can do so, however in this tutorial I'm going to talk about two methods. The first method is by removing the ends in the DNA sequence that you have. So I have this DNA sequence here and it contains a tandem of ends in it and a single N nucleotide at the end. So let's deal with this one by removing the ends. That's what everyone else does. So we define GC calc DNA and significant figures like in the previous tutorial, but we set it as default. The first thing to do here is to replace the DNA from small characters to uppercase characters. So we update the DNA first. We say DNA equals DNA dot upper. This changed every occurrence of lowercase DNA sequence nucleotides to uppercase if any is found in your DNA sequence. Then we do the removal. DNA is equal to DNA dot replace N to empty string. This gets rid of every occurrence of ends in your DNA sequence. Now you can do the GC calculation. Basically, you say GC equals DNA dot count G plus DNA dot count C. This is divided by the length of your DNA. Well, you we have to round this up to two decimal points since we have the significant figures. We don't have to worry about it. You can also write down two if you'd want that one to happen. And you can return the GC. You can return GC plus your DNA sequence to see what happened to your DNA sequence. Now let's run this. Now the GC content is 0.54 and this is the DNA sequence. You can notice that this bit here is not found here. And this nucleotide here is also not found here before the T. You can't see them. And the GC content calculation has been done for you. This is one method of doing it, and you can do it like that. The second method is to use randomized nucleotide picking for each N occurrence in your DNA sequence. So we are going to use the same DNA sequence, which is this one, as a sample DNA, and work on it. The first thing to do is to import a library called random, then define GC calculator. The same significant figure and DNA as arguments. Now, we say our DNA is equal to a list. We convert it to a list. So what we do is we say i.split, like what we did in the previous tutorial, for i in DNA. This changed the DNA from string to a list. Now, we create a random DNA sequence, so out of the ends from your DNA sequence and then we merge it with the already existing DNA sequence. So n is equal to a to t c or g. Now we have to loop the DNA to first find the ends and then change the n to one of those four nucleotides randomly. So we say for n and i in enumerate 
DNA. If I is equal to N, so if I is equal to N, but this one is a list, so we have to be very careful when writing this kind of loop and if statement. If it's equal to this, what should we do? We randomly pick a nucleotide and change the N to that nucleotide. So we can say random dot choice. This is a random choice. And change it. Then you can say DNA for the occurrence of N is equal to X. Now the change has happened, but now we have to change this list that we have back to string. We can have a variable called to string, and this is equal to a list first because it's a two step change. So for every occurrence of any nucleotide in your DNA sequence, we change it to list per se. Then we have another variable. We say string DNA is another variable that we have. And it's equal to empty string dot join the above variable, which is to string. So we change this to string this way. That's done. Now we can perform the GC content calculation. We can say GC equals round. Now we can have this string DNA variable dot count G plus string DNA dot count C and this whole thing is divided by length of string DNA uh, if there's no problem with the brackets and parentheses let's say this is fine this one is fine so everything is going to be neat so we can have an output or out output variable and this can say your DNA sequence is string DNA basically GC percentage is GC Now you can return the output this way. You can feed the DNA sequence here. So this is the name of the variable that we have, DNA seq. Now if you have a look, the same DNA length, but if you have a look, the N nucleotides have been changed. So you can also output the length of string DNA and see it's 33 now print out the length of DNA seq and it's 33 so the length has not changed while the N characters have been changed within this DNA sequence. I hope you 
learned something from this tutorial and the list of the tutorials here. And until the next time.